today. I'm Phil Curran. Uh, I'm the uh, product marketing cloud strategist here at Weka. Uh, and today we're going to talk about how Weka is enabling uh, cloud workloads, in particular high performance compute, machine learning, AI, and a host of um, other high performance applications in the cloud. Um, a couple of uh, just background comments on who is Weka. We we're actually found, uh, launched at AWS reInvent in 2017. So we actually, the original uh, software was uh, born in AWS. Um, we offer customers a modern data platform for high performance uh, compute workloads. What that means is we're delivering uh, high, uh, incredibly high IO, incredibly high bandwidth, and incredibly low latency for HPC workloads or uh, high performance workloads like drug discovery, genomics processing, uh, uh, autonomous vehicle driving, uh, uh, training machine learning models. Um, so um, have a, a, a roster of uh, you know, now many thousands of customers uh, leveraging the Weka data platform. The software-based solution runs same software in the cloud, and as we're going to get into in a minute, in any, in any cloud, at least the four major clouds, and on commodity hardware on a customer's premises environment. So it runs on uh, Dell servers and, and storage, or, or Lenovo and on-prem, or in the cloud, in AWS, in Google, in Azure, uh, and in Oracle. Um, so just to kind of tee up, and I'll, I'm going to dive into an architecture in just, just one second, but just to tee up the workloads that we're talking about here and the, the traction that we're seeing with customers, is again a lot of these high performance workloads. So and they're now moving to the cloud. Um, so um, you know what I think we we have seen in the past is um, innovations in compute and in networking have started to enable uh, these workloads to now move into the cloud. So in particular, um, over the last couple of years, we've seen four to five x improvements in compute density. Now GPU acceleration, obviously. Um, you know, NVIDIA and, and the GPU accelerators in the news all the time um, are enabling uh, massive compute performance improvements. And then on the networking stack, we've moved uh, to, from 100 to 400 gig Ethernet, uh, and that is now enabling these kinds of workloads to move to the cloud. Um, but if you think about the three, three pillars of, of sort of, you know, the infrastructure stack, what we've seen is this massive, massive improvement in compute and networking. Um, but what we're seeing is customers are starting to run into a set of new storage challenges around data stalls, as with a lot of these workloads I'm going to uh, tee up in a second uh, run in a data pipeline. Um, and we're starting to see customers with, with, with big data stalls at different stages of that pipeline. I'll talk a few couple examples of that in a second. Or I.O. blender problems. So in other words, the storage systems, the existing storage systems, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud, just aren't aren't able to feed data into these massive compute clusters or these accelerated compute, compute clusters uh, uh, to, to deliver the performance those applications need. What's happening, the symptoms that that shows up in is things like long, long GPU idle times or long data load times for, um, uh, and as I mentioned, a lot of these workloads move across, work in a data pipeline. So, you know, and each stage, this, this happens to be an example of an AI data pipeline. But when we, talk, when we talk with customers in the drug discovery uh, space around doing things like cryo EM, or when we talk to media and entertainment customers around doing things like visual effects rendering or post-production processing, um, the, uh, all of those types of use cases have sort of a similar data pipeline. Now, the implications here for storage that we have seen are um, each step in, this, in, in these pipelines have massively, uh, widely varied uh, uh, storage characteristics. So if you think about ingest, that's going to be really uh, high, massive bandwidth, uh, uh, massive read bandwidth. And then, you know, uh, pre-processing, you're talking about lots of small files and, and metadata lookups, uh, training and validation and inference. Now you're talking about processing small files, incredibly low latency and high I, and, and high IO. And then archiving and writing all that data back to long-term storage once you get the results. Okay, now you're talking massive bandwidth, but, but on the right side. And so in the past, a lot of uh, storage providers have sort of built individual storage devices optimized for each one of these data, each step in this data pipeline. And what we're delivering with Weka is a single software approach, the Weka data platform, that optimizes performance for every step in that data pipeline. So whether a customer has high I.O., low latency, 
massive bandwidth, mixed files, small files, heavy reads and writes. Um, our, 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 we'll talk through how our software delivers that kind of optimization for each of those workloads at each of that step in the pipeline. Um, and so, you know, these are the kind of things that we're sort of enabling. I, we, we sort of joke that this is our guitar, guitar, our guitar slide, right? Um, that is, you, you know, again, if you think about each one of each of those workload character uh, types, right? Natural language processing, genomic sequencing. Each one has a, a widely varied um, sort of I/O and storage profile. And so, um, uh, our ability to um, optimize uh, performance for latency, for I/O, and for bandwidth. Um, enables customers to dramatically accelerate the applications um, that, that, are pro that are processing these, and then also um, um, accelerate their entire data pipeline. So we're seeing dramatic reductions in data pipeline. Um, so let me dive in. Let me grab my water. Whack in the cloud. Um, so as I mentioned, single software runs both on-prem and in every cloud. We're currently available in all four major clouds, AWS, GCP, Oracle, and Azure. A lot of the examples I'm going to sh sh show um, are, from an architecture perspective, are, are you're going to see a lot of AWS iconography. The principles and the services apply, and I'll do my best to kind of. Good get question, it. Phil. Is it, oh, <clears throat> sorry, I don't mean to put you right into a tech question right away, but uh, S3 or S3 compatible? Is it only, uh, like, could you run it, like, if you got a Minio or, or some other alternative S3 compatible file system, that you could run Weka on top of that? Um, we, we, you can run, so um, we, we, we leverage the underlying storage device, um, but it's our own file system. So, right, right. so it, 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 the best practice would be not necessarily residing on top of someone else's file system, okay, but cool. leveraging the underlying infrastructure. And actually, Eric, that's a, sort of a perfect tee up to, to what we're doing here. So our software runs on that cluster of I3EN instances, um, or LSV3s if you're talking Azure. Um, this is, you know, this is our, this, this cluster, we leverage the high performance NVMe flash that's in each of those instances, and we aggregate all of that flash, uh, that flash memory together to provide that high performance layer. So that, that cluster of instances is what's delivering this massive performance that I'm talking about. So, um, and then what we do is we extend that cluster, uh, the Weka namespace that's residing in that cluster, we extend that into an S3 bucket. Okay, so, so what that does is then, to, to part of your point about how are we leveraging S3, we're actually aggregating the storage that's available to us in both S3 and in, in the instance tier. Um, so we combine a high performance tier in instances with a massive capacity, basically a data lake in S3. Um, then we're tiering between storage between, um, between the, the, the compute tier and the, and the S3 tier. On average, customers are usually store 80, 90% of their data in S3. And then we're automatically tiering the data up into, um, into the flash, uh, flash tier. Uh, we're then presenting that uh, as a file system, as a Weka file system, up into um, customers' applications, again, running in, in, in their VPC, um, leveraging you know, whatever sort of um, storage protocol that they require, whether that's S3, POSIX, you know, NFS, SMB. Um, and so you know, that's kind of quick level overview, we're gonna dive in on a couple of those other things. Um, what I wanna do is also talk quickly about hybrid cloud, um, because I mentioned single software, runs on-prem, runs in any cloud. And of course, like this is, you know, Flexera State of the Cloud Report. I'm sure you all, you all have seen these kind of stats many, many times. It's a multi-cloud and a hybrid cloud world. Like that, this is the reality, and we're, I'm gonna, we're gonna talk throughout in some specific examples of what, it is, what, uh, what customers are doing in this space, but, we recognize that it is absolutely a hybrid and multi-cloud world. And so here's what it actually looks like um, at a high level uh, with respect to um, multi-cloud architectures. So think about Weka on-prem running, you know, on whatever commodity hardware customer might have in their environment, Dell, IBM, Lenovo, uh, Hitachi, et cetera. Um, what customers can do is uh, in, that Weka namespace that's residing in their on-prem environment, the first thing they can do is extend that namespace into an S3 bucket or into an Azure blob, I think I'm showing Azure here. So into that Azure blob storage. Um, and so that's the first step in, right, okay, now I can maintain a usable copy of my data in that blob store in the cloud. The next thing I can do is auto scale that WECA environment up in the cloud. 
and, and we'll talk a, a bunch in how we leverage the uh, leverage the cloud native services for auto scaling and and serverless functions to drive you know scaling up and scaling down. But we can scale up a WACA cluster in the cloud, and then present that to file system, uh, to applications running uh, running in the cloud across not only traditional VMs and EC2 instances, but also Kubernetes. So leveraging CSI drivers to um, to integrate with Kubernetes. Um, so um, a quick just kind of mention about some of the benchmarks and outcomes, what we see with customers when we actually kind of work on these in, in uh, real world deployments. Um, Five million IOPS in AWS, and actually in Oracle, we've we've far exceeded that where we ha we've delivered a benchmark of 17 million IOPS in, in Oracle Cloud. Uh, two terabytes per second of bandwidth, so just massive through, throughput and massive uh, IOPS. But the benchmarks are kind of interesting. What I get excited about is the real world sort of impacts of this. So, you know, the ability to do things like Autodesk Flame and render, render Flame in the cloud at 120 frames per second. So when we talk to, um, to VFX shops about this, like the ability for artists to actually get that like real world feel for, for, their, um, for their rendering and for their editing, um, it's incredibly powerful. Um, and because it's in the cloud, artists can collaborate and share. Um, Analyze thousands of molecules, right? So in the drug discovery space, right? Pharmaceutical environments, um, capturing the thousands of image files across cryo-EM uh, workflows to then go into the cloud. Um, and then when it comes to those collapsing those data pipelines, because of the massive performance benefits that we were, where the customers are seeing with respect to um, application performance, um, they're able to dramatically collapse their entire data pipeline. So, you know, uh, we. I've got some customer deep dives in a bit, but you know, do things like um, a, a, a cryo EM processing job that used to take a month now takes you know half a day. So it's orders of magnitude of improvement in terms of um, the ability to deliver deliver um, accelerate pipelines. Um, and we're helping customers save money, uh, like huge amounts of money, because of how efficient that we are in terms of managing customers' data. Single single version of, of data that processes across that entire pipeline. You don't have to maintain multiple copies for high reads, for low latency, for high I.O. It's a single, single, uh, single software solution. Um, and uh, because we're being efficient in use of cloud resources and leveraging things like auto scaling, um, we, we, um, we'll talk through how we auto scale up, but we also auto scale back down. And so, you, so customers rarely, if ever, have to pay for resources they aren't using for storage which is incredibly unusual. I haven't seen that in too many, too many other places. Um, and um, because we're so resource efficient, we're starting to do work around sustainability. And so customers, we, we've, we've, uh, we've done some studies um, uh, around how much more energy efficient we are. Um, and customers on average see that they're able to reduce uh, by 260 tons of CO2 per year uh, annually when they uh, adopt WECA. Um, and that's kind of the quick pass through what Weka is, our, our overview in the cloud. In our next session, we're going to deep dive into all the architecture uh, of what it looks like um, in the cloud and how we leverage uh, integration with cloud native uh, offerings. But qualification is always good because obviously getting high performance and low cost data performance is super. But quite often there's profiles of customers that may not necessarily match that they can get as much benefit. You talked about the you know, VFX shops, obviously healthcare. There's like massive, like at that scale, it's really cool. Curious, sort of what the the floor is, or where the the lower end of the yeah. first seeing the value uh, type of thing. It, I appreciate that question. Um, I, I would say, you know, um, we're starting to see customers with almost any sort of medium level performance requirement, whether it's you know even a few hundred thousand IOPS or something like that. Um, are starting to get a huge amount of benefit from Weka, and I think the reason for that has to do with the the efficiency gains, right? So, so costs in the cloud are such a massive issue today, um, and, and I think every customer, uh, all the way up to the CIO level, is is now sort of looking at scrutinizing their cloud bill, trying to figure out what are we. It's likely most customers are overpaying for something. Very few customers that I have seen are leveraging all the, the tools that they have from the cloud native providers for doing things like auto scaling, for identifying um, it, even data egress, right? And traffic that's coming in and out of VPCs, like most of the cloud, there's all kinds of 
um, ways that customers are looking to optimize their infrastructure spend. And so even for customers that don't have like the massive, okay, I need sub millisecond latency or I need, you know, 5 million IOPS in the cloud, like our ability to literally cut their cloud infrastructure bill in half for, from a data perspective, um, which is what we're seeing. And uh, it's actually a good tee up. We actually um, have uh, stood behind that with a guarantee. So we are net, we, about a couple months ago, we offered two customers a guarantee that in the cloud, we're so confident in our ability to be efficient with resources, that we can cut their customer's bill from a data and storage perspective in half. Um, and that's been really well received. It's been very powerful. So, so I think that's what opens it up to a little bit more of the sort of the general purpose types of use cases and, and sort of the broader market. Um, and we're seeing a huge, huge um, impact for, or, uh, you know, um, uh, customers will really appreciate that. So. Very cool. Oh, as, as the meme would go, that's a bold move, Cotton. That's fantastic. <laughs> so uh, I love it. Um, yeah, and it, we'll dive into the technology of it, but uh, great, great opening session. Thank you. Okay. Um, I would have a question about the, so you mentioned the cost savings and stuff, um, you know, about the multiple, not multiple instances, auto scaling. Uh, you didn't mention a dedupe or like compression. Is it something like you were looking at as well? Or? Data reduction, we do. Okay. Um, yep. Uh, in fact, uh, what, earlier this summer, we offered data, data reduction um, to it, native in the software. So mm -hmm. that is in there. Um, you know, uh, uh, we could deep, we can dive into it a little bit, okay. um, but yeah, that's something we offered, I think, in summertime, August frame, something okay. like that. that we wanted. And in terms of the security encryption and stuff, I guess that's all in place, right? You're leveraging, uh, in, you know, uh, key rotation and integration. So encrypts uh, in flight and at rest, right. integrates in with um, customers' key management rotation processes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Cool. We might dive into it with the with the technology in the next few sessions, but I was interested a little bit about more about that hybrid slide that you had up and extending the namespace. And then is, is that coming? I'm or? I'm happy to talk about it now, but it's absolutely it's a big part of what's coming. We'll park so. it then. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I actually had two. That was actually one of them. So I appreciate you bringing that up. I think all of us when we saw that were like, mm, "How is that actually working?" Yep. Um, but the other thing that I did want to bring up, and I think it's worth mentioning, thank you for having a sustainability slide, especially when you're discussing AI. Mm -hmm. uh, ML and HPC. I think that's something other vendors should definitely jump on board to help, or help you know, generate enough understanding of like, hey, we're actually thinking about these things. This is something that we want to make sure that we're, you know, intelligent about. Awesome. Thank you.